My son, Solomon says, hear the instructions of thy father, forsake not the law of thy mother. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Again, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Again, my son, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding. And I can read scripture after scripture where a father is speaking to his son or a father is speaking to his children encouraging the children to obey the word of the Lord, to be good citizens, to make wise decisions, to look before they leap and not to participate in group think, but to have uh, minds of their own and to make decisions based on the way that they have been raised. Yes, all of these scriptures, and I haven't even scratched the surface, there are so many more that speaks to and encourage and uh, speaks to the value of good dads, the value of fathers sowing into the heart of their children. I want to say to the fathers today, Happy Father's Day. Guys, dads, you are incredibly important. You are necessary, and I salute every one of you. There are very few honors that I have in my life there are very few things that I value like I value being a dad, being a father. I'm the father of two. My oldest, Crystal Amanchuku, she's my little dolly, my sweetie pie. And my son, the baby, my son, Patrick Jr., he would, he would look at me funny for calling him a baby, but uh, he's the youngest, and I'm so proud of both of them. My lovely wife, Pamela, she's the mother of my two children, and I enjoy being a dad. And I hope, I hope that I've been a good father. I hope I've been a good dad. Here's what I know. I know I haven't been a perfect one, but I've tried to be a good one. And uh, I love my children, and they love me, and my kids love the God of the Bible. And I credit their mother, I credit uh, the, the Lord himself, and I hope that I have played a role in my children's development. And I pray that I continue to play a role in their development. And don't get me started on what a joy it is to be a grandfather. But I wanna speak to the dads out there today. And I wanna say to you, hey man, you count. You matter. When I think about Father's Day, two of the greatest days of my life, and I am 55 years old, I'll be 56 uh, in July, and, uh, but two of the greatest days of, of my life were the days that I met my father. They are so vivid, they are indelibly sketched in my mind. And those of you who have had the opportunity to grow up with your dads, hey, you better thank God for that privilege. But I saw mine twice, and I'll never forget, it was a warm summer's day, early in the morning, and I was walking, well, late morning, actually, and I'm walking up from my mom's house, uh, going toward the little uh, neighborhood store. The store were called um, Amelia's, and we would go up to the store, and if the store wasn't open, Auntie Amelia lived across the street from the store, and we would just scream, I want to get in the store. Now, that's country uh, 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 talk there. And she would come out and open up the store and sell us whatever candy. You know, we, back, we were big on nihilators back then. You know, you eat one for now and save one for later. But while I was walking up there, I'll never forget, a car pulled up. It was a yellow Camaro. Um, Phil Jackson, he's, he's deceased now, was in the passenger seat. And I looked into the car and there was this man sitting in the car with huge arms and uh, a long cigar uh, uh, protruding from his mouth. And Phil said to me, boy, do you know who this man is? 
and I looked and everything in me wanted to say my dad, but I was afraid because I didn't want to be wrong. And he said, boy, I said, no. He said, he said, boy, that's your daddy. And when my dad got out of the car, he may as well as have, to me, he was 20 feet tall. To me, he was bigger than the, the, the largest bodybuilder. I'll never forget his arms and, and his stature. And I looked up and there was my father. And for the first time, Oh, I guess I was around 12 or so. I heard his voice. I'd heard about him from my mom. Thanks, mom, for telling me good things about my dad. You know, mothers, even if you and your children's father are not together, don't put that man down. Don't tell the kids their father is no good because you guys didn't make it for whatever reason. Uh, don't uh, uh, just uh, walk on dad because you got to remember, if he, if, if he believes that his father's no good, and he came from the loins of his father, then what does that say to him about his worth? My mama made me believe that my dad was bigger than life. And when I saw him, he lived up to everything she'd promised. I can tell you about the song that, that he sang that day as he sat at the piano and played, my mama played, and, and he sang a little Ray Charles, uh, the song entitled, The News Is Out. He wasn't a Christian. Uh, I, hey, I shouldn't say this, but I was, I, I peeked later that evening and I saw him kiss my mom. I'll never forget it. And we went out to a restaurant and my dad had all of us to sit at the bar and he stood at the, at the restaurant. It was old, the old Woods 5 and 10, downtown Rockingham. And he stood out at the bar with ripping biceps. And by the way, he told me, he says, he, he, he taught me some exercises and he told me if you do this and what to do to help grow my, my biceps, he said they would grow. And he said this, you're gonna lose that baby fat one day. And uh, 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 those things are in my mind. And my dad was standing there eating the hamburger and, and, and I tried to give my seat to him. And dad said, sit down. And he, he lowered his voice and I want you to know I sat down. My brothers and I were kings for a day. And he left and a few years later, a few years later he came back to visit us at that time, my friends, the, 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 the muscles were gone, but he was in a, in, a, in a bad suit. He was dressed up. He was driving a Cadillac at that time, and the Cadillac seemed to be a city block long, a long black caddy. And he stepped out of that Cadillac with his, with his suit on and, and, his, and, his, and his big hat. And I was out in the yard working on my bicycle and uh, wasn't paying attention and saw this big car get out pull up and my dad got out of the car. I was king for a day. Uh, by that time, the muscles were gone. I didn't know that he was, he was on drugs, but we had that day with my father, the late Thomas James Wooden Sr. I've never forgotten those visits. I still, at my age, try to work out and build and carry a little muscle. You, you may say, well, preacher, you didn't, didn't do good at that, but I've tried. And I like to wear suits because it reminds me of my father. It connects me to him. I have a picture of him on my desk. I have memories of the pictures that we took that day. My brother Tom and me and my dad and we were out there. But the house that we lived in was destroyed uh, by fire and those pictures were burned, but I still have them up here. Just two visits, two visits from my dad left that impression upon me. I hope that I have, in being in my children's life, uh, impressed them. I hope that I have inspired them to serve the God of the Bible. I must say that we serve a good God and he made up for the times when I didn't have my father. He, provided for me one of the greatest dads a man could ever have, the late, great James Henry Turner. He preached me out of my sins and he treated me like I was his son. He's in heaven now. And uh, of course, uh, my spiritual father, my dad today, the Bishop Leroy Jackson Woolard, who has just 
Love me like a father would love a son. And I praise God for that. I praise God for the relationship that I had with the late, great G.E. Patterson. Uh, uh, he referred to me as one of his sons, and I, I, that will always be an honor. But no spiritual dad, no preacher, no one moved me like my father did with just two visits. I want to say to the fathers out there today, know that you are impactful. You are impacting your children, whether you know it or not. If you're not telling them who they are, if you're not encouraging them to do their homework, if you're not leading them to church, if you're not telling them who the God of the Bible is, if you're not there to cheer them on academically uh, and also with their sports and athletics and all the things that dads do, you're influencing them. And if you are doing those things, then you are having a powerful, positive effect on your children that will be with them when you're dead and gone they will still be talking about their father. In 78, my father passed, and here I am in 2017. And I can vividly recall those visits. It's as though they happened the, the other day. So listen, dads, happy Father's Day to you. And in this greeting, I want to close with just a little admonishing. Hey, man, be present. Make a connection with those children if you haven't. If you are connected and if you're wondering whether or not uh, they're paying any attention, uh, they are. If, 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 if you feel as though you're wasting your time, you're not wasting your time. You're doing something that is invaluable. Pay no attention to the liberals. Pay no attention to Hollywood. Pay no attention to the crowd that makes you, will make you believe that gender doesn't matter, that moms and dads are interchangeable, or that, that the roles doesn't matter, uh, that you can actually, that a, that a woman who thinks she's a man can be a dad? Oh no, th th these are all lies from the pit of hell. Fathers, dads out there, you matter. You are so important. And society and, and the world and our institutions, our, 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 our universities, our colleges, our churches, hospitals, the thoroughfares, places where people gather, Uptown, downtown, the mall, everywhere needs the influence of dads. And to be honest, these things have the influence of dads, whether it's a positive influence or a negative one, whether it comes from an, an, an involved father teaching his son to pull his pants up, to hold his back straight, to practice good diction, to go to school and make the grade, to respect women and to respect others, to respect the law, to respect institutions, to love the God of the Bible, to attend church, to read their Bibles, or dads who say nothing about these things, dads who are, are negative examples, dad who let their kids see them smoke weed, or smoke cigarettes, or drink wine, or drink beer, or you do not tell them how fortunate they are to be born in America. You do not tell them the, that you don't teach them that this is still the land of promise and the land of opportunities, and that they should not allow uh, people from other countries, foreigners to come in and take advantage of all America has to offer, and they fail to take advantage of it. Dads, we need you. Children are many times more likely to graduate from high school, many times more likely to go to college. You know all of the statistics. Uh, many times more likely to be successful when they have the positive influence of their fathers. I want to encourage you today to hug your children. Kiss them. Kiss the boy, <laughs> your son. He's going to say, get out of here, Dad, but do it. Kiss that daughter of yours. And, and tell them, tell your children uh, how special they are. 
don't let a day hardly pass without telling them that you love them. And um, instill positive messages in them. Tell them that they can make it. Tell them that you're proud of them. Scold them when needed. Discipline them when needed. I said discipline, Gary, not abuse, but discipline. But be there. And when you're there, do this for me. When you're there, dads, be there. Not just there physically, but man, be in the moment. Get off that cell phone. Get off. Stop uh, scrolling. Put the phone down and talk to little Johnny. Talk to little Susie. Look them in the eye. Make contact. And when you ask them how was, how was their day, wait for the answer. Look at them when they talk to you. To you. Tell that pretty little dark-skinned girl that she's just as pretty as any light-skinned girl. Let her know that she is just as precious and that she's not beautiful despite that dark skin, but she's beautiful because of it. Why did I mention that? Because we live in a world that everything you see many times tells us that beauty, the beauty standard is the other way. Well, we're beautiful also. Everybody's beautiful in their own way. God made colors. God made complexions. God made people. And let me tell you, whites are as beautiful as blacks and blacks are as beautiful as whites. Asians are as beautiful as non-Asians and, and, and vice versa. The Hispanics, are you, people are beautiful. But many times, many times, our people get the wrong message. Encourage them. Encourage them. Tell them as I close this that you do not have a cognition problem. You are as smart as anyone else. If that child, if, if your classmate can learn and can get the curriculum and get the lessons and learn it and do it, so can you. Praise the Lord. And when their father tells them these things, I'm telling you right now, they'll believe it and they'll strive. Praise them when they do well. And on times when they need a little constructive criticism, give them that. But dads, don't be negative. Don't be negative. Don't be a, 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 a censorous type dad who always criticize their kids and, and the kids can never measure up. You'll destroy them that way. So I'm through with my little instructions for the day. I pray that you have a fantastic Father's Day. I thank you for taking time to hear what I had to say. And uh, I'm going to enjoy my Father's Day at the Wooden's household. Uh, my wife and my kids see to it that Father's Day is a big deal. They all, they've always done that. And I, they've always made me feel uh, so special. I appreciate my, my church. The upper room never allows Father's Day to pass and not uh, say something special uh, to the pastor. But you know, you don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to have a church. I pray that, uh, that you've conducted yourself in a manner where at your house, uh, Father's Day uh, is, is a big deal because it is a big deal. So to all the dads out there, Happy Father's Day. Thanks for watching and encourage your family to love, serve, hold to, submit to, worship, praise, adore, lift up, glorify. You hear the preacher coming out in me? The God of the Bible, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he is Lord of all. God bless you. Thank you.